Laughter. The footsteps through the hallway. I'll never forget the hard times. Every day I come back from work, it's always like this. We're yelling in front of the kids. The help we needed. How far we've come. These days at your local Legion, we're marching to the beat of a different drum on a mission to support veterans, to have fun, and to welcome everyone to our ranks. You don't have to be a veteran to join the Legion. And as a member, you'll join thousands of others serving our veterans, our communities, and our country. Oh yeah, and our member perks program will save you thousands on shopping, dining, products, and services across the country. Join us at legion.ca. This is Rogers TV. Hello, everybody. My name is Jason Piercy, and this is Out of the Fog. This is a fun one. It's going to be a fun one. And I also realize I've probably said that a bunch of times, but we've also touched on some really serious stuff. But this one is about Christmas and Christmas traditions and the things that are cool and the things that are fun and the stuff that we laugh at. And it's in the context of a comedian and a comedy show and mummering and where that came from. So we're going to talk to John Sheehan and also Lynn McShane, uh, who's the executive director of the Mummers Festival here. All that right after this. Welcome back to Out of the Fog. Uh, I'm a hobby horse, sort of. I mean, I'm actually Jason, and uh, I'm actually really warm, and I'm actually got messed up hair, but this is so cool. Um, Lynn McShane, hi. Hi. Thank you for coming. You are the uh, executive director of the Mummers Festival. That's correct. This is a hobby horse. That's right, Jason. And it's got a mouth that moves, which I just showed you as I operated it like I'm basically Jim Henson. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I feel like most of our audience should get that reference. Of course, the puppet master himself. Um, whew. Um, mummering what it is, uh, our culture, where it comes from, all of these things. Um, let's just get into it because it's so cool and it's so fun and it's so different and special. Absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, what's mummering? Well, mummering is oh, it's been per it's been happening here in uh, Newfoundland and Labrador for over four hundred years now, and it is a Christmas time house visiting tradition, and so. Um, it comes over from the parts of the UK and Ireland, and uh, it happens kind of during the days between Christmas Day and old, old Christmas Day, if you will, and so kind of that dark time of the year. And uh, now, when you say dark time of the year, what do you mean by that? Both figuratively and literally. Okay, because it, it is sort of a. It's, it's the come down from so much excitement. Absolutely. And there is a darkness associated mm -hmm. with that because you're like, you become withdrawn from everything always. And yep. so there is a darkness. Plus, it's like we, it, we live in the middle of a rock on the cold North Atlantic. It's That's cold right. and dark. Cold and dark. <laughs> and so it's a, it was a way primarily um, throughout all the outports you know of the island and but it also happened here in St. John's and and so people would literally rig up 
um, in any kind of an outfit that they could. Yes. You know, I, I remember myself going up to my grandmother's closet and pulling out whatever I could get yep. my hands on. You mitts know? on their hands, boots on their, no, that's backwards. Boots on their hands and, and mitts, mitts on, on their, their feet. feet. That's yep. right. And so you disguise yourself, yes. you know, and the, the, the goal is to disguise yourself enough that nobody knows who you are. And so, you, as you say, you put boots on your hands, you disguise your hands, you disguise your walk, you disguise your talk. Yes, you know, uh, all kinds. Of, so mummering in my head, the idea of where mummering got its name, I, I can almost, from only from my personal experience, um, I can almost say that they're named after the way they talk. In a way, yes. Because it you is know. very like... Yes, you, you speak with an ingress voice like that, you yeah, know? <laughs> right. And, and, and we know that mumming comes from, you know, the mummer's play as well. Back in Tudor times, they, you know, there was a mummer's play that was performed, and they actually referred to it as mumming. You, uh, I don't know anything about this. Yes, there's a So, okay, let's talk about this. So the mummer's play features, char you know, it generally is the same uh, wherever it's performed, but it, it, it features a hero, an anti-hero, you know, various kind of chorus members, if you will, various characters. And so um, I'm sure you remember the name Chris Brooks. Yes. And so he was instrumental in kind of uh, bringing back that mummer's play to life here in the, in, in the province, cool. you know. And so they cr created the mummer's troupe, you know. And so there's a hugely long history, you know, hundreds and hundreds of years of, of the mummer's play and, and the mummering tradition. That, that we're talking about. Is it, it's unique to Newfoundland in that if you aren't from here, you might have no idea what oh, we're no. doing. Oh no, 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 none. But it's not unique to Newfoundland globally because we have sort of inherited it from some of our genealogy across the pond. Sort That's of. right. Is the practice of mummering still active where we took it from? Yes, it is. It's active. More so? Less so? Um, how will we put it? I would think that um, there's, as they consider it, more pure forms mm. of mummering. You know, our Mummers Festival, it celebrates and, and preserves the tradition of mummering. Um, and, but we do it in a lot of different creative ways, like through our workshops and things like that, to educate people about the tradition. In, in Ireland, I know that they, they do the mummering tradition in different parts, um, and it's, it's not so much uh, focused on, say, the arts and the crafts part mm -hmm. that we do, you know, but they absolutely still, still carry out the tradition. They actually, in parts of Ireland, do it during Halloween as well. Mummers okay. come out. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So is it not, has it not always been, because I'm, I'm trying to figure out the source of this and where I'm going mm -hmm. with this now. So I always considered it a Christmas thing, and mm -hmm. perhaps here it is, which made me figure it had some sort of Judeo-Christian root. But it could, it might not be. Like if it's a, if it's also a Halloween thing, it could be just like a winter solstice, yes. pagan yes. kind of thing. Yeah, and and we also, I've actually been in communication with a young gentleman who's uh, from Turkey, who's doing some study on uh, folk folk plays from the Anatolian region, and he contacted me and said there's an awful lot of similarities in in folk plays from that region. And, and here. so I mean, it makes there, sense. Yes, yes. Like so if, you, if you think, if you go back far enough to where everybody's, mm -hmm. everybody came mm -hmm. from, that there would be these stories would be told over and over yes. again. And, and now what we have, because you, you mentioned when you were talking about people back in Ireland mm -hmm. and, and being purists. So, I mean, I'd, were there hobby horses and heads and jaws that... Hobby snap? horses yeah. hobby horses have appeared in, in the UK, certainly, and in Ireland, you know. Um, probably slightly different, you know, but they all kind of originated with the wearing of an actual horse's skull and hide, you know. Wow, uh, okay, yeah. so it, it was dark. There. It was dark. Yeah. The hobby horse is a darker yeah. kind of tradition. and Because it's uh, kind of scary. It can be very scary. Um, and one of our board members actually grew up in Cape Royal. Yeah. And um, the hobby horse appeared during Christmas time yeah. in that community, which is interesting because my family is from Renews, just yes. a little bit further yep. down, and it never appeared. 
you know. So it could just be one family. It's, yeah, one family from one region, exactly so, came and brought their traditions, you know, but, but the hobby horse was very mysterious. Because it almost feels more like, like, uh, like you mentioned turkey, and obviously this is not turkey, but it almost feels more like the, the Deutschland, like German mm -hmm. Krampus than it yes. does. Yes. And that dark, mysterious yep. sort of figure. And like, if I had to explain to my daughter what mummering was, mm -hmm. and I wasn't allowed to talk about personal experiences or laughing and fun, I wasn't allowed to play the mm -hmm. mummer song or any of that, and I just had to say, well, these people show up to your house at night, <laughs> um, you can't see any of who they are. You have no idea who they are. They're covered in the weirdest clothes you could possibly yeah. imagine in the wrong places, and you can't even see their eyes. Mm -hmm. And they mumble yes. and talk funny, and they dance around your house and drink all your alcohol <laughs> and pick you up and whip you around. And you're supposed to like it because yes. it's fun. Yes. Lots of, lots of kids, and not only kids, it's scary. are scared of mummers, you know. So uh, there is a darkness in, in There the is history. a dark night, darkness to it, you know, and um, certainly in St. John's it was actually outlawed because of some of the, the, the events. No. Yes, it was only in the 1990s that it actually came off the books. It was illegal to mummer yes. in the city of St. John's it until was. 1990. Well, yes. Okay, so I host a trivia night regularly. And that's, that at some point is going to come up. Wow. Yes, we're actually having a talk. Dr. Joy Fraser from Memorial University, who's a folklorist, she's uh, delivering a presentation at the rooms as part of our festival. And her presentation is, is uh, entitled Mummers on Trial, Custom and Controversy. Okay. Let's talk about the festival. Yes. I, I could get in. The yes. history and the folklore of it is so fascinating to me, trying to trace back where it comes from, and we, we've only got so many minutes. Yes. So let's talk about the Mummers Festival. Absolutely. What are the timelines? The timelines are November 25th to December 9th, and we kick off okay. on, on Saturday the 25th with a lantern-making uh, workshop. And this is a lantern, right? This can is I a lantern. You can. I'd like to look at this and show it to the audience while you explain this. So... Our good friends from the Lantern Festival, um, we partnered with them last year to create a, a lantern because, of course, they're renowned for their lantern making. And we decided it will so be a cool. nice opportunity to, for people to do um, make their own lantern, but that's mummer themed. And so people can uh, come to our workshops. Uh, that this one in particular is a registration-based workshop, and they have, we have all the materials and all the basic templates. But people can get as creative as they want, and then a little light goes inside. Yeah, so I mean, it's effectively um, a mason-type jar. Yes, it's a jar, and it's a candle holder, mm -hmm. kind of. Yes, for a shorter like tea light yes. or if you want to be careful like a battery yes. powered one yes and you decorate it with mummery slash yes. Christmassy stuff that's so cool yes and so again it's it's crafty but it it goes back to what we're trying to do educate people about mummers and so we're friendly mummers we're not friendly mummers. mummers yes yes and we end of who won't buckle your floor no, well, maybe, maybe, maybe. So if people want to see what the Mummers Festival is providing and they want to get out and they want to have fun, they want to be a part of things, uh, where do they go? They go to our website, mummersfestival.ca, and it has every event that we have, uh, up to and including our grand finale, the Mummers Parade, on Mummers December 9th, Parade. and our Scuff and Scoff concert featuring Mr. Bud Davidge and friends. Oh, Bud is a... Bud, Bud is a genius and he's famous so here here is a poster all about the 15th the 15th annual, annual mummers, mummers festival i'm surprised it didn't start in 1990 as soon as it became legal <laughs> lynn thank you so much for coming out uh and we're going to get as many people to this thing as we possibly can i'd like to go to the parade on december 9th myself uh thank you very much thank you thank you guys very much and i'll be back in a little bit uh, not wearing that thing. I gotta fix my hair first. We'll be right back after this.
welcome back to Out of the Fog. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the, I was gonna say handsome and charming. Yeah, handsome and charming. Ruggedly handsome. <laughs> <laughs> rugged. Comedian, actor. If you knew um, me, there's nothing writer, rugged about me. Uh, <laughs> Mr. John Sheehan, and also newly married. I was at your I wedding am, this yes. summer. Yes, yeah, it was fun. You, you were one of the last ones standing. That's actually true. You were but I had a cane. Pal. Yeah, so it was you had a bit of help there. Yeah. No, but I was I was one of the last ones standing. That's true. Yeah. Um, so, John, it's nice to see you in a professional environment as opposed to your wedding where there was nothing professional happening. No, it wasn't. But it was, really, it was a really good time. It was a fun it was time. A really you good know, time. It was, and everything went right that day. The sun, it did. From the sunshine and uh, Jason Greeley singing us down the aisle. Yeah. It was, it was great. What it was a, really, fun it day, was really yeah. nice. I connected a few dots, actually. Yeah, I almost didn't, I almost, like, there was a few people, like, I, I forgot that I invited and was pleasantly surprised, like yourself, you know. So. <laughs> okay, here we go. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Okay, so. You were Tracy's um, list. Yes. <laughs> I was Tracy's <laughs> list, not yours. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so. Let's get into the, because we're going to go on a million tangents. This is what we do. The two of us. ADHD, yeah, well, D, 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 know, D, 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 D. Are you diagnosed or undiagnosed? Because I'm diagnosed. I'm diagnosed oh, okay, and so. medicated. Oh, but yeah. the time of day that we're, we're filming right now, I've missed my second eight-hour dosage because it, I, I've metabolized it so quickly. Uh -huh. So I've, I've missed my second daily dose by about a half hour. So I'm we got like... hour slow-release doses. Yeah, see, that, my went through it too fast. They had to yeah. give me a second one. Ah. Uh. Yeah, so anyway, um, let's do some work before we mm -hmm. spin out. Sure. Um, you got Christmas shows. I do. Out. Yeah. Yeah. Which is great because you're a devout Christian. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing about my Christmas show. No religion. I don't mention it. Okay, hold on. Wait. I don't Wait. mention politics or religion at all in this show. We gotta stop. We gotta stop for a second. Go ahead. And because Christmas yeah. is a religious holiday. Sure. So me, is, are you saying that you have a winter solstice com comedy show? No, I have a Christmas comedy show. It's about Christmas. It's about uh, everything about Christmas except for the religious part. So it's about con consumerism Christmas. Yeah, it is. It's about, you, you know what? Here's the thing. Here's the thing. So it's consumerism. Consumerism. Yeah. It's, uh, here's the thing. I, m you know, my uh, religious background or lack thereof is well known in the province anyway. But I love Christmas, man. I'm a sucker for it. I don't care. Me too. I'm an atheist. But you know what? Christmas, my mother loved it. My mother absolutely loved Christmas. And I think that came over to me a bit. But, you know, th this show is about things that, irritate me about Christmas. And irritates everyone, I think. So everyone will get a chance to vent a little bit through me, whether yeah. it's about parkade, parking at the mall, yeah. whether it's about shopping at Costco, shopping anywhere. You know, the latest toy craze. I talk about, you know, things from or Cabbage Patch up till now. Furbies. Furbies. Or, they or were big. also, your package is stuck in Dieppe, because that Everything. happens. Yeah, right, package is being stuck. <laughs> Uh, and, and people who got kids can relate that, you know, the older they get, the smaller the cr presents get, but the more expensive they get. True. So it's just, you know, it's uh, the Christmas parties, uh, office parties, you know, I always found it funny at office parties to see who was going to be, you can always pick out the guy who was going to be one who was going to tell off the boss that night, right? This was going to be his night, he's the one going double-fisted around 8 o'clock, and he's just looking for trouble, right? Looking for it. Yep. Right? They don't treat me right Double lens, they don't treat maybe, me right. and diet. Yeah, and he's but just got to be like, just in case. It's got to be the diet. Oh yeah, just to watch his health. Just to watch his health. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> and uh, Christmas concerts, you know, um, parents, have, you know, school concerts when you have to go, and it's okay when your kid is in grade one, because then if you manage to get a seat on the aisle or on the side, yeah, once fine. your kid's done, you can you can bail, right? That's your right. Your kid's in grade six, you're screwed. Yeah, right? you're there. All you're day. there for the whole you're, thing. Yeah, and you know? and when they're kindergarten, grade one, grade two, that sort of stuff, mm -hmm. like the concerts, I mean. They're not very good. You know like what? We love them and we are. love the kids, and they're really sweet and they're, they're really horrible. cute, but they're terrible. They're terrible. And but you, you know can. Who's worse though? It's not the kids at these Christmas concerts. It's the parents. But it's also the teachers who want to get up and do the thank yous at the end. It's not there's about that. you, there, there, Miss there's, there's the teachers who just wrote this thing because they didn't feel, feel fulfilled in life. And <laughs> so they wrote this. Okay, we're going too far already. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about the dates you I'm showing a couple of particular teachers, a friend of mine in particular now. Uh, <laughs> uh, where, where, where can we get tickets? Where are the shows? Uh, tickets what are the dates? for the, uh, well, the shows at the December 7th, I'm at McNiven's. Tickets are really going fast for that, too, uh, in Airport Heights. 
Yep. Yeah, we got a pub in here, Fort Heights, man. We got a pub, we got a Chinese restaurant, not just a gazebo anymore, folks. We're good, you know, we're good to go. Now, this is what we do up in here, Fort Heights. Skidoo, skidoo. If your mother gets saucy, no. I, <laughs> I, I, I know it's the lyrics of all them. Okay, so <laughs> you're at McNiven's when? Uh, the 7th of December. Okay. I'm at Toll's timeout on the uh, 9th. Which is back up and running. Yeah. And I'm told it's no longer the, the same demographic in the audience that historically would go to Tolls. Tolls, yeah. Well, you know what? I did a show there. Because um, it was an older audience for a long time. Well, I, you know what? Older audience is my wheelhouse, right? 30, 38, 35 to uh, 55 plus is pretty much right where I want to be as far as the audience goes, right? Okay. Yeah, and uh, but I did a show at Tolls uh, in uh, October of 2020, two weeks after I had my stroke. I did a show at Tolls. That was the last time I was at Tolls. And, How was uh, that? <laughs> it was good. Did you do a it John was fun. I got impression. A, was that? Did you do a John? I did not do a Christian <laughs> impression. No, I did not bother to do that. <laughs> Although, if you want to play a reporter, no, I, I think we should, it out of you, you know? I think we can. We can stop right now. <laughs> okay. Uh, so you got uh, oh, and I'm at Harbor Grace told on uh, 14th at the old courthouse. It's because you're you're from Harbor Grace. Yep. Have you at the old courthouse? Yeah. Uh, any of your Harbor Grace behavior result in you being in a courthouse when you were a kid? No, I stayed clear of it because my aunt worked there. She was just as a piece there. She was, so there was, I, I think that was a deterrent for me to be able to, you know, because there was no hiding it. I couldn't get away with anything. You know, yeah, but if your aunt is a justice to the peace, then maybe you'd just be, get like wrist slap stuff a little easier. No, or I think she'd go hard they, on they, you. Yeah, they would go hard on me. They, you know, yeah, and yeah. you're old enough that, you know, you used to beat kids. They did, yeah. I mean, yeah. I came in at the tail end of the strap era, right? <laughs> And Brother Murphy would take out this beaver tail and lay it on the desk. <laughs> and he'd look at you. And in my mind, I knew he's not allowed to use that. But in my mind, I also knew he will. He will. There's no doubt. <laughs> so you grew up in Harbor Grace. I don't know if I ever grew up, but I well, spent a fair bit of time in Harbor Grace. Yeah. <sighs> you went from low numerical digits of age to higher numerical digits of age while residing in Harbor Grace. That is a very nice way of putting it. That's, a, that's true. Okay. I did. It's, yeah. I wanted it to be. I basically grew up there, Jace. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I, it's so funny. The audience, you guys wouldn't know this, but when I walked in and saw that John was sitting there in the green room waiting, I was like, oh, I forgot who this was today. And I turned around. Anyway, I'm teasing. Okay. Uh, I love having kind of conversations stuff I put up with, with you. All the time. Right? So, uh, you grew up out in that area, and yep. just from having previous conversations with you, I know that y you didn't necessarily love living there. I hate, no, I hate it. Okay. Do you, do, do you... Here's the thing, I didn't hate it when I was growing up. I hated it later on in life when I was married and had a couple of kids and I felt, and you know what, it's not even the town's fault, it was more me feeling like I hadn't moved anywhere, you know what I mean? I felt kind of gotcha. like, okay, I'm still in this town that I grew up, I'm really trying, I, I swear a lot, and I'm trying here not to, and I, every now and again I'll catch myself just as I'm about to swear, yeah. so I'll edit myself out all the time. Right? That's okay. You know? Yeah. Uh, so I think so, it was resentment. So, so resenting, blaming your lack of growth on the town and resenting the town for it? Kind of. But there's a real lack of growth on the town's part too. Well, sure. The yeah. town, you know, and I had issues with council, and we brought so the projects town to the town to try you. to. We brought projects to the town, especially in the early, uh, uh, late '90s, early 2000s. We brought a couple of projects that were really good ideas to the town, but there seemed to have been. I hope it's gone past that. There seemed to have been a defeatist attitude out there. Okay, and but so that, that seems to be changing. So, from my experience, like in in real estate, specifically residential construction. It seems to me the majority of our province had, had a defeatist attitude for a long yeah, time. Absolutely. But we're much more progressive now, and that's yeah, a good thing for mean, business um, and culture. And the old courthouse is open up out there now, which yes. is a destination spot, man. If people haven't been it's out so there. It's so cool. It's got like, have you been out there? It's got a speakeasy in the bottom. Yeah. It's really nice. Uh, and of course, down next summer, I think they're going to be opening up the cathedral, yeah. uh, the church, into a hotel. Uh, so is, is all of this like kind of evolution of stuff in Harbor Grace, how is that affecting? your opinion of things because you got this show like were you when you were booking the harbor grace show were you like a little bit yeah. oh i wasn't going to i thought uh no i wasn't going to book a harbor grace show i was really against it actually because uh i felt that um i don't know maybe i was a bit uh paranoid i guess but maybe you know there's there's uh, and again it goes back to my opinion of myself like i haven't achieved what i thought i sure. wanted to achieve so yeah, i but thought you've grown up now you know, 
right? I hope so, To yeah. a degree. And I bet the town has too. How is that reflecting? Because tickets are on sale already. Yeah. How is that reflecting in Harbor Grace? Uh, I'm shocked. T tickets are over half sold out for the show in Harbor Grace. And, uh, you know, I did a show in Harbor Grace in 2002, 2003. It was a sketch comedy thing. And we sold out every show to run uh, for two years. And uh, it was after that there started to get some, um, between myself and the council at the time, there were some bad issues. You know, I felt like they weren't... 20 years ago, John. 20 years ago. Well, one grow was, up, John. One it was, was only, 20 years ago. Uh, see, see, Jason, you're, 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 talk, you're telling me to grow up at the beginning of the story when I'm halfway through the story. And, <laughs> you know, I go about to 2010, but now that's only 10, 12, 13 years ago, right? Yeah, grow you know, up. <laughs> all right? So I think the town of Harbor Grace is actually starting to grow up a little bit. So it's good. good. That's good. You know? So um, there's still tickets available for all yeah, three, shows, three shows, but they're, yeah. they are selling out quickly. McNiven's and Harbor Grace are going really fast. Tolls is catching up really quick. So, okay, yeah, I'm, so I'm, I'm happy with it. Pleasantly surprised. Good. Where yeah. do people go to get those, those tickets? You can go to eventbrite.ca for the tickets on uh, at McNiven's and Tolls. Okay. And uh, I'll, to be honest with you, the old courthouse, they're selling tickets themselves out in Harbor Grace for that. Uh, so I guess go to their website uh, for the courthouse. Yeah, Facebook page, and they have their ticket information. And there. people go to your website. I'm sure they'll be able to. Oh link yeah, I'll it direct to them. I'll direct them that way. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. So now I'll go to what is it? John Sheen. John Comedy. Sheen Comedy. Dot com. Dot com. John Dot Sheen. Com. Thank oh, you very much. And I got to throw it out there. Um, uh, this is a really. You know good what? I forgot I was going to throw it there. So don't really worry good it. use of airtime. Thank you, John. I appreciate it. Thank you. I hope that all of the shows are as well put together as that. Moment you know, a there. person is only good as the person who's doing the interviewing, so. That sounds like a really good time to wrap it up. <laughs> so, thanks for coming, John Sheehan. <laughs> I love you, buddy. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be right back after this. Welcome back. So I hope that you had as much fun with this show as I did. So this Christmas, get yourself out there. Let some light in to a season that can otherwise be pretty dark and cold. Go to one of John's shows. Check out the Mummers Festival. It's going to be so cool. And the Mummers Parade. Speaking of which, I'm going to say good night. We'll see you next time. Here's some footage from a previous Mummers Parade that might get you inspired to check it out. program is brought to you by Ignite TV. Now you're in command. Visit rogers.com for more details. If you have a comment about this program, we'd love to hear it. Email or call us or send us your feedback through social media. TSC has exciting offers every day on gifts for everyone. New Today's Showstopper. Oh, yes. Big hug for mom.